let us get on with nation building. How have, I think we, these are how good have qualities, we done that? And we will support that. Would you contradict me if I tell you that we have got here not by suppressing or pretending that race differences, language differences, cultural differences do not exist, but that they can coexist without the majority obliterating or oppressing the minority. That's how it's been done, Mr. Shah. Yes, agreed. Not by trying to make my friend Ahmad Mata and Siddiq Sanif Chinese or honorary Chinese, but by my accepting them as fellow Singaporeans with equal rights entitled to equal respect. And when they feel differently and they want to eat separately from me, I respect that. That's how it's been done. Not by pretending it doesn't exist, but by accepting the fact that there are fundamental primeval differences and telling each other we have to live, put up with each other, accommodate, compromise, bargain, compromise again. That's how it's been done. And this is how I put to you, Mr. Chiang, not only your party, but all parties will be forced to go if you have team MPs. You have then to find accommodation, not just with Muhammad Jofri Mahmoud, but with what he represents, what he wants, what he aspires for, for his community. That's the point. Well, I agree with your Prime Minister. Well, thank you. you. you thank you. Mr. Chairman, here is a good time for us to see whether race is an important factor or not by looking at some actual situations. Could I ask for Table 2 to be distributed? Table 2 lists out the constituencies which were contested by Malay candidates in general elections from 1955 to 1984. You'll notice that way back in 1984, 1948, Inche Sadon made Haji Juba, stood in rural east, <coughs> a predominantly Malay area. Now, we look at a map showing the constituencies for 1955 where the Malay candidates contested. Would you recognize the constituencies contested in 1955 by Malay candidates? Sambawa, Ulubadok, Southern Islands. These were the three constituencies won by Malay candidates, and the majority population in these three constituencies were Malays. Changi, fourth constituency contested by a Malay candidate, but uh, he lost. Now we move on to the next map, which uh, showed where Malay candidates stood for election in 1959. Amnu candidates contested in uh, Sambawang. Hamid bin Jumat in Ulu Bedok. And Mahmoud Siddiq in Southern Islands. Ulu Bedok in yes, Southern Islands. The areas shaded likely were the areas also contested by Malay candidates. May I, may yes. I add that right. because it is something I know. For the first time in 1959, Mr. Chia, the PAP fielded Malay candidates in non or any party fielded Malay candidates in constituencies where Malays are not the majority and won. On the PAP 
pulling power to get the Chinese to vote PAP in spite of a Malay candidate. That's the first time it's been done and only been done by the PAP. Now, I would uh, move on to the next chart, which uh, shows where Malay candidates contested in 1972. Gelang Sarai, Kampong Kebangan in the same general area, Kampong Ubi, Pasar Panjang, which now includes the former Southern Islands. Now we move on to the next, to the next uh, map. We jump to 1984. You are familiar with the situation in 84, Mr. Chan. Can you tell us where the Malay candidates contested, whether they were from the PAP or from PKMS or from Workers' Party? <coughs> I didn't make a study of it. Then look at table two. Well, then look at the table two. Brickworks, Yunos, Gelang Sarai, Kampong Kebangan, Kampong Ubi, Kolam Ae, Pasar Panjang, Seklap, Tanah Merah, Bowen, and Tampines. May I ask uh, Mr. Chum or Mr. Lin? What is your interpretation of the various maps which we had, which we have been looking at? On, on, on surface, it would, it would appear that, uh, you know, with the, um, the resettlement and the drop in the Malay population, it would appear that the Malay candidates stand lesser chance in the non-Malay constituencies. It would appear on, on the face of it that, uh, you know, it then, because of resettlement, the one-time Malay majority has now become a Malay minority. Quite right. It has more or less time diminished their chances of success at this constituency. Right. So how did they set out to maximize their chances of success? Where did they stand? Gelang uh, Sorai, Kampong Kebangan, Kampong Ubi? No, as I said, as I said, I believe this problem can be overcome if you can find a good candidate. We are trying to go by the evidence shown because they have stated very clearly that uh, there's no evidence of race playing a part in uh, politics. I'm trying to prove to you that race is a primeval force. You may disagree on the percentage of weightage before the voter decides on a candidate. But from the choice of the candidates themselves, doesn't it... Uh, Tell us something, that racial composition of a constituency plays a part yes. in where the candidates want to stand. Yes. I think there's no denial in this respect. Does uh, Mr. Chiam agree with Mr. Ling? Do you agree with uh, Mr. Ling? Yes. Race, uh, Thank you. Is, is a factor to be considered in elections? Yes. <laughs> In the afternoon, the discussions continued on voters exercising their preferences for a candidate of their own race. Mr. Prime Minister, we agree, Mr. Chairman, that we do have this problem. But are we taking the right solutions? This is what we are trying to say. Have you a better solution? You know that there is a problem. Tell us what your solution is. Possibly the ruling party should get the prerogative. If you feel a Malay candidate in certain constituencies, you must make it a, a rule or an unwritten rule that the opposition must also feel the minority candidate. The, so see. the ruling party has got... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the ruling party has got the prerogative. Whoever yeah, forms right. the, the government, he should have the say, who, where I want to fill the Malay okay. candidate. I, I, I understand you now. Therefore, if we feel the Malay in Kampung Kemangan, only Malays can contest in Kampung Kemangan. Not Correct? necessarily only no, no, Kampung Kemangan. Just by way of example. Yes. Right. Now, we may be able to get your party to agree but we may not be able to get the SUF to agree, or the Workers' Party. Therefore, we'll have to pass that into the law, right? That would be very undemocratic, wouldn't it? I think that it is you better. allow the PAP to decide which constituencies it will feel Malays, and only Malays. Now, let's assume we pass that into law, right? We reserve. 
nine seats where we have Malays, only Malays, where we have Malay MPs, only Malays can stand. I am telling you, as Secretary General of the PAP, who has fielded candidates for all seats in seven general elections since 1959, 59, 84, seven general elections, and I had to decide where to put Malays. The first breakthrough came in 59, where we won several seats with substantial Malay minorities. And depending on the pull of the PAP, got Chinese votes to support them, and we won. Now, by the 1970s, when the riots by the late 70s, 1976, when the communal riots were fading in the memory and the younger generation grew up. I had three feedbacks. BAP branch secretary, community center management committee, citizens consultative committee. There are three different feedbacks. I arranged it. One is my party, two the government. One through the PA, People's Association, another through PMO, consultative committees. They asked me, please, next time, give us a Chinese candidate. This, this chap can't get on with our Chinese grassroots. So, several of them, including Sharai Tadu, I had to move them at the next elections. Sometimes, after moving them within one year of the new constituency, having a new MP, I get the same request. Please, next time, can we have a Chinese candidate? Because this is very difficult. Several such MPs who could not establish rapport empathy had to be dropped. There was nothing wrong with Sharai Tadin. As an MP, as a man, except that he could not bridge this cultural, linguistic, ethnic gap. Now, if we designate Chai Chi, Malays only, the Chinese voters and the Indian voters who are now the majority will revolt. Therefore, my scheme, twin them with the next constituency so that the Chinese voter, if he finds no empathy with the Malay MP, will look for the Chinese MP. So can I say something? No, but that is, a f I'm telling you the genesis, the reasons why your scheme, I've thought of it. Just say, in this area, only Malays. In this area, only Indians. There will be a revolt from the non-minority voters. So I disagree, sir. Because, sir... What is your experience? No, as... No. No, as... No, what let, is let your, me how many elections have you contested? One elections. Oh. I but have contested... I know, sir. I know, Mr. Nine Mr. general <coughs> elections... Participated in nine general elections, contested in eight. If I include the Malaysian Federation, my party contested in one general election there too. So what we need to do maybe was to give a person like Shari Tadin a lot of Chinese assistance. <laughs> I did. Okay. I provided him with full backup staff. And now with comprehensive uh, education in English, I think this problem will solve it itself. Because people will be English educated now, they can understand, communicate each other as we go along. And I think <coughs> they should be able to communicate in English with each other. And if a parent cannot speak English, cannot communicate with the MP, we he, have been he will have children. We have speak. been communicating with each other in England. I still don't understand you. I don't understand how 18% object, and therefore an elected government cannot do it. So each time we're going to do something, we've got to say, look, how many percent is it? I'm oh. not saying that you cannot do it. You can I do just it. Don't understand but it is that. wiser not to do it. Uh. I'm not saying that you cannot do it. You're an elected government, 18% disagree. You can do it. But it is wiser not to do it. 
for anybody, any Singaporean, to stand up.